Today, we will be looking at three examples from the people inside the pro room to see how they tell the stories on LinkedIn and what are the things that they can do to make it better. Let's get started. A few people participated in this and I, I like that you did because there's uh, opportunities to learn. So first up is Mo and here's his story copy and pasted from LinkedIn. And the, the picture that you see here is the image that he shared with this post. And I want you to remember this picture as we're going to look over his post, okay? Now I've reformatted it because it was hard to kind of uh, put 400 characters on, on one page so we can see. What I've done is I've used two colors to identify two key things that are necessary for almost all stories. I have to find the conflict. And so I highlighted the conflict in yellow. He is struggling with his identity. And the lesson learned is the green. This is the ordinary world to the new world where Mo learned to embrace his own uniqueness. Does that make sense so far? So now I'm looking through his story and I'm trying to find details of his struggle. And I see descriptions, but not so much him in it. I don't see his pain. He, he writes in a very intellectual way. This turned me into a cultural what is that chimera a multi-cross hybrid due to the very nature of modern culture it's almost too professorial so the language in which he's using starts to create barriers for people to read into and we have to be very careful about this communication isn't using a big vocabulary it's about using language that connects with your audience and so my suggestion and my critique to mo is i love the two parts i struggle with my identity i brace my own uniqueness now there's two parts of this. One, I need more information about you and specifically like what you dealt with with your identity in, in very real ways, strip away the academic language, stop being a professor and just tell me as a human, like hey Chris, you know, this is what's happened. Like you're just telling a friend at a bar. And when you learn to embrace your own uniqueness, what were the benefits of that? I also didn't see that in here. So there's some details here and he says in, in this last paragraph, it's very clever writing. Uh, there's no critique on the on, on how he's crafting the story, but I feel like there's still a barrier I have to get through to get to know the real Mo, but I want to go deeper with Mo. So here are the questions I have for him is how did you struggle? What were the consequences? And my suggestion is by describing the story in a way that allows us to walk in your shoes, to look at the world through your eyes, I'm going to connect with you. The last thing I want to say is this picture. I think we need to find a picture that's more vulnerable. That's kind of you in whatever environment that you're in, but not looking at the camera like as a selfie. I'd like to see something candid, something real, maybe from back when you were in Senegal or in Saudi Arabia or something that really speaks to culture. So that one image almost tells the entire story. The details are in the words you choose. Okay, next up is Annalie Hansen. Okay, this is Annalie's picture. So it's, so remember this picture. And then let's look at the story. Now I've added something here and I've underlined key words or phrases because they support the story. So the struggle was I was afraid people would laugh at me. And so she paints the picture and Annalie's very good at tapping into her emotions and her vulnerabilities. So she's saying, I'm nervous. Uh, I'm going to share my dream which I couldn't even say out loud. That sounds nuts. And why is she afraid? And why is she nervous? Well, because she can't speak English. She thinks she's not good enough. Those are the parts I highlighted. And then she says, but my dream is stronger than my fears. That's the takeaway. Let your dreams drive you versus living under your fears. And then we're now also not seeing the benefits of this takeaway, this life lesson. The reason why it's this case is because it's fairly new. It's very recent that this has happened. So if you dive deeper back into your history and your timeline, you'll be able to pull out stories that you already know the consequences and the benefits of. And we'll see that in a second, okay? So here is what was the ordinary world? The green is what's the takeaway and outcome, and it's clear. The dream uh, to dream uh, and let your dream be stronger than your fears. And if she can drive that point more clearly, it'll make the story even stronger. 
And here is when she she talks about, and this is a question for you as you're reading other people's story is, how did they cross the threshold? For her, it was jumping on an Instagram live, exposing herself to her English and speaking to someone, me, that she was nervous to talk to. There's very good points in this story. Lots to learn. And now here's Matthew and Cena just crushing it. Here are the images that he chose. He chose three images. I just put two up here. The awkward, doubtful, like, it's, see, it's candid. It's like weird. It shows like even the way it's framed, like he's lower than me in this picture, even though we're very similar in height, right? So there's a sense of vulnerability there. And then he shows the outcome. So you don't even need to read the rest of the story. These two images tell it. Okay, Matthew struggle. No one will care about what I have to say. Look how he begins the story right after the car crash. The proximity of the struggle to the, to the beginning of the story, I think increases the, the chances that somebody will read all of your story. What's the conflict? He says so right up front. And look at how many underlying things I pointed out here in his story. So no one will care about my story. I have doubts. Uh, I want to teach something on YouTube. That's nuts, right? Uh, being on camera, he wanted to be perfect. He hated the sound of his voice. He wasn't good enough. He didn't want to look bad. And he had 26 versions of doing something. Look how clearly he paints this very vivid picture for you to understand the struggle. The details here allow you to relate to him or not. Each time he gives you a detail, the audience is not literally doing this, but they're raising their hand and they're saying, me too. I've been there. So if you struggle with identity, I want to know how. And they could be like short bite-sized phrases like this. A lot of good editing happening with Matthew's story. And if I know Matthew, and I think I do, he probably wrote this a lot of times and just crafted and crafted the hell out of this so that's so compact and potent. The lesson learned, the green part, is I switched my thinking to be valuable to others. Is it quite phrased that way, but that is the lesson. And the result is I produced dozens of videos with millions of views. I am better at articulating myself. I'm more comfortable and now I'm invited to speak. See, the hero has returned and he's sharing the, the, the gifts or the boons of his adventure to this ordinary world. So he tells you. So in the story, he tells you how he crossed the threshold, what the benefits of the decision were, and now you also maybe need to craft a little bit what the key takeaway is. So if he had a little bit of in that, that in there, it would have sharpened the lesson. The takeaway would be super, super clear. And you can see in the reactions of his posts, how many people are cheering him on. So why are we doing this challenge? The criteria for this group is to help you get business leads, to generate opportunities for you as a speaker, as a writer, clients, whatever, as a person of influence. And I think right now LinkedIn is, is really where you need to spend your energy. Another thing I noticed, uh, I, I saw this on Mo, Mo's post, he was using a lot of line breaks and quotes and he was almost writing it like a screenplay or a rap or something. And you'll notice on LinkedIn, it only previews a couple lines. If you space it so far out, they're gonna read one and a half lines. And they better be really hooky one and a half lines because otherwise nobody's gonna look at it. Something else I noticed about Mo, he hadn't posted in like eight or nine months because his last previous post was ages ago. So his inactivity is not going to help him. So what we wanna do is we will make intentional action every single day to develop a new habit. You got to do it because the algorithm, the algorithm is going to love you for it. Don't let it be between now and the next full moon to write your next post. To drive engagement, you want to post thoughtful commentary, not yo bro, you nailed it or straight fire because that doesn't really drive engagement. If you want to establish yourself as a thought leader, someone to pay attention to really take the time, use the rubric and use that as a lens in which to provide meaningful, critical, constructive feedback. And you'll start to see your growers or your followers or, or on LinkedIn and people who want to connect with you will start to increase. So what I want to do is to make the greater in, uh, like habit of sharing with you how I look at things so you can figure out how you look at things. This is the way I do it. How do you want to do it? Here's how I'm making decisions as to this is good or this needs improvement or this is not good. And if I share those choices with you and we did it together, more or less, then you have the same skills of observation and decision making. So the idea is you should be able to critique your work 
as good as anybody in this group, including myself. That's the goal. I'm working toward that goal. You will feel like, God, I, I, I have the exact same feedback as I would have if you were doing a one-on-one -on -one with me. And here is the chat and tabs. Here's challenge number two. It's going to sound familiar to everybody that's participated in challenge number one, which is to write a story. So this will look really familiar because it's literally where we started. I want you all to write a story to tell it, tell a personal story that elicits an emotional response with a clear takeaway. So I've simplified this from last time. The story elements, there's a character that's you and the character has to be uh, attractive meaning there's details about you, there's struggles, an imperfect character is an attractive character. Uh, a character that has a worldview that might polarize people is attractive. So Mo talked about his multiculturalism, about growing up in one place and moving around and speaking five different languages, but maybe never feeling quite at home and trying to find a place for himself. That's highly relatable. So what does he want? He wants to learn to love his dark skin and his multiculturalism. His obstacles may be his environment, his own self-belief. So he has that anxiety of a call. Okay, so the post limit on LinkedIn is 400 characters. That's not a lot. That's just a little bit more than Twitter, it feels like. Use the limitation to force yourself to reduce it down to the absolute essential. If you start with the struggle, if you focus on the key takeaway, You'll then only add the elements that are necessary to construct a story to pay off in the struggle and then the learning outcome, which is your takeaway. Does that make sense? Because I can tell you my entire life story and it's not going to, it's not going to matter. It's not going to add up to the story that I want to tell. I want you to go so deep and so vulnerable with the struggle porn that you're like, there, I know what that looks like. And then you can back off on that. And you'll see that the results m will probably most likely shock and surprise you, okay? In a very positive way. This is really critical. I'd love to see you write at least one story, but if you can do more than one, you're off to, to something good. If you can go back into your archives and find an image that's gonna grab people's attention as kind of like the illustration to your story, you're going to get the two working for you in synchronicity. Image and words combined together make a very powerful thing. I promise you, if you just do it, wonderful things are gonna to happen to you. This is another tip that I have for you. If you want to make people feel and understand your story, what you need to do is to evoke the five senses that a person can have, like seeing, hearing, touching, tasting, and smelling. The more vivid you can paint a picture inside their head, with these five senses, the easier for people to visualize and feel your struggle and your pain and your story. This whole series was taken from one of the code inside the Pro Group, in case you didn't know. The Pro Group is a community of diverse creatives all around the world. And whenever you do something, you need a partner to take action with you. And if you have a group of people that are highly motivated to have a charter, you are much likely to have it done. So join the ProRoot to be a part of this wonderful community and level up yourself to achieve your goal. Here is a Pro member to share her experience. It's so cool to see everyone wanting to see you win, to see everyone supporting each other, to like have these challenges and make it fun, you know? Um, I feel like there's this sense of family and, and, and connection that I have never felt before in a group like this, especially when there's a group over 500 people, right? But it just feels like home. And I, I cannot recommend it more. It's been a, a huge blessing. So if you're interested, check out thefuture.com slash pro dash group, or you can click the link down below to know more about the pro group. Thank you, and I will see you in the future.